Okay, so we have 80, what did I say? 7 and 88, right? Okay, so 87 is the one that has what they told me this morning looks like Braille. Don't worry about it. Who said that? All right. So here's the deal. What I don't want you to do is panic about what this looks like. Because basically what this is showing you is that the way you write a polynomial function is in descending order by degree. Okay? A sub n is represented by your leading coefficient. All right, so where this is n minus one, n minus two, whatever, and so on, whatever your greatest variable is, that's what's here, and then they're decrease, usually they decrease by one. Now, can it skip a variable power? Yes, it can, but they're just showing you that that's the standard form that you write. Is everybody okay with that? The, the number that is so, so important that you look at is your leading coefficient and the degree. And the degree is given by the very first one. That's why you have to write it in standard form. Everybody okay with that? All right. So when we are looking at this, um, yesterday we looked at the degree of um, your function. So this one has no x variable, so it is a degree what? Zero. Zero. It is a what we call a constant function. Everybody okay with that? Yes. So the leading coefficient technically here is four, right? What is the line? What does this look? What does this graph look like if I graphed it? Yeah, it would be a horizontal line at four. Is everybody okay with that? Yes. Okay. This right here, it is a degree what? One. How how do you know, Abigail? Yeah, there's only an X and it has a power of one because there's no power written, which means it's an understood one, right? What type of function is this? What would it look like if I graphed it? Negative five X plus one. What would it look like? It's linear, right? Okay, we know that it's linear. What is the leading coefficient, the number in front of X? What is it? Negative five. Negative five, okay. If I was graphing the parent linear function, it is y equals x, right? Or f of x equals x, right? Goes through the origin and goes this direction, right? That's the parent function, yes? The negative causes it to do what? It, it causes it to have a negative slope. It causes it to reflect on the x-axis. That's what it does. So this graph is gonna do something like this, right? Here's the deal. What, what, what you need to be able to do by the time we're done with this is look at the equation and have a general idea of what the graph's going to look like. If you know what the leading coefficient is and you know what the power is, you, can, you can know what the graph looks like. Are you going to know what all of everything does in there and where it crosses the axis lines and all that stuff? No, but you should have an overall idea of the shape of the graph. That's what you need to be able to do. This is what type of function? It's quadratic, right? Everybody okay with that? Yes? Okay, which means it's a degree. Two, its leading coefficient is positive 12, right? What does a quadratic, positive quadratic function look like? It makes a U. Everybody okay with that? Does that make sense? If it was a negative quadratic, what would it look like? It flip over, right? That's what a negative out front does to any function. All right? This one right here, it is what type of function? What degree is it? Three, which makes it called what? Cubic, right? Okay, if you, on page 44 in your notes, it's, uh, it's green. Okay? It, I don't know, I have it in here. It's a green sheet. We did parent functions. Yep, that's the one. Michaela's got it out. It's parent functions, and we did parent functions, and we did a cubic function, okay? The parent function, so a positive x to the third function looks something like this. That's its shape, okay? Is everybody okay with that? All right, this one has a negative out front, so its leading coefficient is not 1. It is 
negative one. So the negative sign is going to cause it to do what? Flip over. So now it's going to do this. Is everybody okay with that? Okay. This one is a degree what? Four. Okay. An even degree function. So that's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, and so on. Okay. From beginning to end, are all ultimately going to look the same. Okay. So from beginning to end, if it's positive, it's going to come down, do some stuff in the middle, and end going up. You see the one on my board on the far left? You see that one? That is a degree four function. Is everybody okay with that? All right. If I had a degree six function, it would do the same thing, except it would have one more wave at the bottom. If I had an eight, it would have another wave at the bottom. Is everybody okay with that? Everybody good? Now the parent function of x to the fourth does exactly this because the numbers in the middle are what make it have the extra waves, like the w or the extra bumps. Is everybody okay with that? Is everybody all right? So if this one is has a leading coefficient of negative three, what is that going to do to the graph? It's going to flip it, so it's going to do something like this. Now, is it going to have some waves in there? Probably. But I know it's going to begin, come from the negative, and end going to the negative. Is everybody okay with that? All right, here, this is a degree five. Its leading coefficient is nine. What you're really looking at with the leading coefficient is the sign. Is it positive? Is it negative? Is everybody okay with that? So this is a positive odd function. All positive odd functions do this. Linear is odd, right? And when it's positive, it comes from the left and goes to the right, yes? When this one's positive, it comes from the left, goes to the right. When a linear is negative, it comes from the left and goes down, right? When a degree three is negative, it comes from the left and goes down. When a degree five or seven or nine or whatever odd number is negative, it's gonna come from here and go down. It's gonna have that shape. Is everybody okay with how that works? Yes or no? I said, you're not going to know what it does in the middle, but you should know where it begins and where it ends. If it goes, if it comes, if it makes a U top shape with bumps in the middle, or if it makes a top, if it, if it goes in opposite, if it's beginning and end going opposite directions. Is everybody okay with that? Because evens, the beginning and the end go in the same direction. Odds, the beginning and the end go in opposite directions. Is everybody okay with that? Is that logical, everyone? Okay. Is it logical that the positives go this way for evens and the negatives go this way? And it's logical that for odds, the positive go this way and the negatives go this way. All good? All right. So a constant function looks like f of x is equal to some value of c, some number. Yes? And we already said they're going to do this. We really just went through all this. A linear looks like f of x is equal to x, right? That is the parent function, so it goes through the origin right there. When you add b or subtract b, that shifts it up and down the y-axis, right? Yes? All right, a quadratic is f of x is equal to x squared. If it is just x squared, it passes through the origin and does something like that. If it's negative, it's going to flip over right there. Other stuff makes it move left and right, up and down, right? Your cubic is f of x equals x to the third, and I already talked about what it looks like. And if it's x to the third with no numbers out front, it's going to go through the origin, and that's where it turns. Is everybody okay with that? If it was negative x to the third, it would come through, still go through the origin, and then turn there. Everybody good with that? Logical, everyone. All right. X to the f of x is equal to x to the fourth. And again, this would be true for x to the sixth, x to the eighth, and so on. Is still going to make this shape. It may wave around in the middle, but it's still going to ultimately start up and end up if it's positive. 
Quintic is going to look exactly <laughs> like which function? The cubic. It's going to look like the cubic, x to the 9, x to the whatever. All of those are still going to do this same thing. They all have the same pattern. Everybody okay with that? So that, okay, so look at my board over there on the left. The middle graph, is it an even or is it an odd? Look at, it, look at its end arrows. Do they go in the same direction or opposite directions? Opposite. opposite directions, that means it must be odd. Opposite directions, they're odd. It has to have an odd degree. Is everybody okay with that? Look at the fourth graph or the third graph over there, the one on the far right. It must be what? The, the one on the right. Oh, yeah. It's even. How do you know? The right. The arrows are going the same direction. Is everybody okay with that? Does that make sense? Wait, why is it negative? Then that means the leading coefficient is negative. That caused you to reflect. So this is a this graph right here that looks like a W. It must be at least an x to the fourth. It could be more. I just drew it. Right. I mean, I don't know what numbers are. It's at least x to the fourth. I'll explain how you can tell that in a minute. Okay. It's at least x to the fourth. Okay. This one is at least x to the third, but it's absolutely odd because it's going in opposite directions. Odd opposite directions. Even are going to go in the same direction. This is even positive leading coefficient. Odd positive leading coefficient. Even negative co leading coefficient because it's reflecting. Are right okay with that? So you can just look at the graph and know half your information. So a lot of y'all are taking SAT again or ACT again. Some of these things, you can just look at graphs and be able to know things without really having to do a whole lot. Because you just, if you just know that information, it helps you identify things without really having to do a whole lot of work. Everybody okay? So if it looks like a W, it's at least X to the fourth, but you know it's even. If it looks like an M, it's at least X to the fourth, but it's negative something out front, okay? But it's still even. Yes, everybody good? Okay, here we go. Um, what they want us to do here is look at what's gonna happen with this graph. They said use a calculator. We don't need a calculator. Like you absolutely don't need it. This right here, my, if this is an even function, right? With a positive coefficient. So ultimately it's gonna look like what? Yeah, it's gonna look like something like this, right? I don't know exactly what it does, but it's gonna look something like that, right? Does everybody agree? Okay, so here they're asking you, and we looked at that this a little before. This is talking about in behavior. So as X, so as I move to the right, because as X approaches infinity, that means as I move to the right on the graph, what is F of X? F of X is Y. What is my graph doing? Going up or going down? It's going up, right? Y is going up. So I'm approaching positive infinity. Everybody okay with that? We didn't do this earlier in the year. We're just doing it again. Okay. As X approaches negative infinity. So as I go to the left on the graph. So if you assume your origin is here, right? As I go to the left on the graph, where does my graph end? Going which direction? Also up. Here's the deal. Evens, you look at your leading coefficient. If it is even, they're both going to be either positive or negative. Is everybody okay with that? These are going to match for an even function. Everybody okay? Does that make sense? Because they're ending both going up or both going down. What determines that? Your leading coefficient. Is everybody okay with why the power and the leading coefficient are so important? Okay, here. What does this graph look like? Yeah, it's an upside down U, right? It does that. So as I moved, if, if I assume my origin here, as I move to the right, X is go or Y is going, it's going which direction? Down, so that would be negative infinity. As I go to the left of the graph, I'm also doing what? Going down. Everybody okay with that? If they're even functions, they're gonna match. And whatever my the sign of my leading coefficient tells me which or what they, whether this is positive or negative. Is everybody okay? All right. Here, this is a cubic function, right? It looks something like that. Yes. All right. As 
I move from left to right, as I go to the right, what, how does my graph end? It, it goes to positive. As I go back the other direction to the left, what's it doing? It's going negative infinity. So when you have an odd function, these are going to be in opposites. If it's going from left to right, then it's, go, it's ending at positive infinity and beginning at negative infinity. Everybody okay with that? you got to look at where it's going. And you remember, we always read the graph from left to right, yes? Okay, so this one, what is this graph going to look like? Yeah, it's going to start here and go down. Everybody okay? So as I move to the right on this graph, where am I ending? Negative infinity. As I go to the left, I'm going towards, Emily? Positive infinity. Yeah, the shoes look kind of like this. Okay, everybody okay? All right, here. What does this graph look like? Michaela, what's this graph look like, baby? X squared, what shape do they have? Quadratic. Yeah, it's quadratic. So what shape does it have? It's a U. It's a U and it has a negative lean coefficient, so it's going to be... Yep, so it's going to flip over, right? It's going to do this. So what are my signs here? Which direction is it approaching here? Yep, both of them are negative. Both arrows are pointing negative. Your top one is always going to be the right side. Your bottom one's always going to be the left side. So look at which direction your graph is pointing. Everybody okay with that? Here, this is a what type of function? Cubic, so it looks like this. So, Abigail, this is going to be... No, the first one is going to the right. Oh, to positive. positive infinity. And then as I go to the left, it is negative, negative infinity. Is everybody okay with how you look at those? You always, we always do the right and then the left. Okay? If you look at this, as X approaches positive infinity, as I move to the right, what does it do? As I move to the left, what does it do? Is everybody okay with that? Yes or no? Are we good? Okay? Yeah, I just hit my knee. Oh, okay. All right. So, all right, so if I have an even degree and my leading coefficient is positive, what is my graph going to ultimately do? It's going to do this. If I have an even degree and my leading coefficient is negative, what's it going to do? Flip over. It does not matter whether it's squared to the fourth, to the sixth, to the eighth, to the 22. Ultimately, it's still going to begin up and end up or begin down and end down. Is everybody okay? If I have an odd and it's positive, what is it going to do? Start where and end where? Start at the bottom. Start at the bottom and go up. Remember, it does the same thing as a linear graph. It just curves. It looks just like a linear, because a linear is odd, right? It's x to the first, right? Everybody okay with that? So if it, my leading coefficient is negative, then it's going to do the opposite and come down. You need to memorize this. Like, you absolutely need to know this. Okay? Now, can you graph it and see what it looks like? Yes. But if you know in advance, you save yourself a lot of time having to graph something out. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Looking at its end behavior, what can you tell me about it? It's negative. It's negative. Why? Because it doesn't have variables. Yep, it's negative. And is it even or odd? Odd. Even. Even. Why? Because uh, they're facing they're they're going the same way. They're in a pair basically. Okay, so. This should be a, let's see, it changes, look at this, it changes, it goes up, right? One, goes down, that's two, goes up, that's three, comes back down, it's four. It should be a fourth degree function, at least. Like, 
it's absolutely a fourth degree function. So this one, what can you tell me about it? It's positive and what? Positive odd. If your arrow is going opposite directions, it's odd. How many degrees do you think it is? Huh? Yes. It goes up, then it changes directions, then it changes a direction again. It's third degree. Wait, so for the negative and positive, if it's ending going down, does that mean it's negative? And if it's ending going up, it's positive? It depends on whether it's an even or odd. Because if it's even, they're going to go the same direction. Yeah. And if it goes up, it's positive. And if it goes down, it's negative. If it's, if it's odd, then they're going to, odds are always going to go in opposite directions. And, and if it odd. ends going up, it's positive. But if it ends coming down, it's negative. Okay? Does that make sense to everybody? Are we good there? Okay. So now we're on this page right here, page 88. All right. So here we're going to talk about like how to describe some of these things. So where your graph switches directions, you see right here where it switches directions. Yes. Okay. So these are called turning points. All right. Which is what this says right here. They're turning points. If you have, so we have turning points that can be called a relative maximum. And then you also have relative minimums. I'll talk about them in just a second. And then you have maximum, an absolute maximum or minimum, which is called an extrema. Which means it's the, it's the very, very top. So when you have a quadratic that is an x squared function, it has an absolute bottom or an absolute top, right? It's the highest or the lowest point of the graph. Does that make sense? Yes or no? Yeah. Okay. So those are absolute minimums or maximums. Is everybody all right with that? On this graph right here, these are your turning points. That should be logical, right? Here... Um, so let me turn to to turn this over here. So I want to look at this on the screen on my board over here. All right. So I drew some of these earlier so y'all could look at them. So this is an x to the fourth function that I just drew. Okay. So because this graph is going to continue going forever in the positive direction, there cannot be an absolute maximum. Does that make sense? Because this never maxes out. It goes forever. Is that logical? In the positive direction. But it has a relative maximum because in relationship to the other rest of the graph, that's where it tops out. Does that make sense? So it's a relative max. It's a turning point. Okay? This graph has these two minimum values. This one's the absolute lowest, so it's the absolute minimum. Is that logical? This one is a minimum. But this one is lower, so it's a relative minimum. Is everybody okay with the difference in the relative and the absolute? Yes? Okay. This one is an x to the third. It's odd. Odds will not ever have absolutes because they continue in both directions. So odds will never have absolutes. They'll have a relative minimum and a relative maximum, maximum minimum, but they won't have absolutes because these keep that from happening. Is everybody okay with that? So whichever direct if you have whichever direction you have arrows pointing, you can't have a max in that you can't have a max in that direction. Is that logical? Is that what I mean? If you have an arrow going in a direction, like going up, you can't have a maximum. If you have an arrow going down, you can't have an absolute minimum. You can have relative, but you can't have absolute. Okay. Does that make sense? Because there is no absolute minimum because this goes forever. And there is no absolute maximum because the graph goes forever. Just because it's what you see on your screen doesn't mean it ends. That's why there's arrows there. Now, if it had endpoints, now are there ma absolute maximum and minimums then? Yes. But when we're not, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about regular polynomial functions that are going to graph and go on forever in whatever direction based on its degree. 
So these cannot have an absolute minimum or maximum. Odds won't, okay? Because they're going in both directions. If I flipped it, it'd still go forever in both directions. So odds are not gonna have absolutes. They're just gonna have relatives. Everybody okay? This one has an absolute maximum because it, but no absolute minimum because it goes forever in the negative direction. Is everybody okay with how that works? So evens are gonna have one or the other. Odds are not gonna have either. But there's still gonna be relatives also in the, in the evens. Is everybody okay with that and how that works? Okay. I just wanna make sure like I explained that so that you could see how they work because you have to identify them on your summit. What, the minimums of the maximum. You do it the same way we do. Remember when we did quadratics and you had to find the vertex, the minimum and the maximum, you do it in your calculator. We'll talk, I mean, like, but y'all remember doing that, right? Like, I don't know, I'm not asking you if you remember all the steps. I'm asking you, you remember doing that. And you had to find that vertex, right? You do it the same way. We just have to go find them. Everybody okay with that? All right. So here they're talking about finding these turning points. So if you would um, graph this function for me in your calculator. This is a cubic function, right? X to the third, yes. Oh my gosh. Did your graph look like this? No. Did you put all of it in blank? Did you put it all in the little exponent thing? I do that all the time. No. Oh, okay. I thought there was something messed up in it. Okay. Are your stat plots on? Maybe. Oh, my stat plots are on. You probably have some data in your stats. How do I turn my stat plots off? Go to second stat and then turn off. I went to oh, second so stat and then I had to do L1. Go hit enter and then go in there and turn an arrow over to off and hit enter. Okay. I think you're wrong. Really, because it's not doing it. Okay. Now you should be okay. Hopefully it'll okay. Oh my god. Did we get it fixed? No. Yes. Here. So see how it's on? Go over there and turn it off. Now we gotta turn now we gotta get this back to the line window. Hey, go to Zoom standard so you can get rid of your because you're probably Zoom staff from before. Did y'all get it fixed? Turn it off. Go to standard. Now hit graph. There we go. Oh, don't face graph. Okay, they got it. Yeah, yeah, yours is zoomed way out. You're probably in lean. That okay. Was mine. That was Mallory's. Okay, so you should have this now. Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is a what? Relative maximum. And this is a. Is everybody okay with that? Okay, to find these numbers. You're going to go to second trace. Here's where it says minimum and maximum. The directions are right here on your paper. Okay? So we're going to find the minimum. So that means I want this one over here. So you remember, you got to get on the left side, hit enter, get on the right side of it, hit enter, and then hit enter again. And if you did the maximum, great, get it. Because I need it too. All right, so your minimum is at 3.29 and negative 4.3. That's the lowest point on the graph aside from where it goes down forever, right? To get your maximum, I'm gonna do the same thing except I go down to option four and click on max. I can remember I gotta go on the left side of it, hit enter, go on the right side of it, hit enter, hit enter again. And I got, 0.71, yeah, 0.71, and my y value is positive 4.3. I don't know what mine's doing today. It didn't give me All right, the All right graph it again. Okay, 
All right, get on the left of it. Get in. Get on the right of it. Get in. Get in again. There it is. It kept saying error when I did that. Make sure you get on for sure to the left of the curve and for sure to the right of the curve. Okay. Did they, did, were y'all able to get those or no? Anybody else having trouble or we're okay? All right. Get in. Okay, so make sure you get over here to the left of it. Get in. Get over to the right of it. Get in. Get in again. There it is. Okay, when it says guess, you need to get in there again. Okay? Everybody good now? Are we okay? Okay, so we got all that, right? Okay, so our graph does something like this ish, right? That's what your graph did. This point right here was 0.71 and 4.3. And this point right here is 3.29 and negative 4.3. Is everybody okay with that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So now they're talking about increasing and decreasing intervals. You read these. This is so important. You understand how to read this. We read them from left to right, your graph does. Your independent variable is always X, right? We are only writing the X values. Okay, so I'm gonna go, on and go back up here to this graph. If you look at this graph up here at the top, this one, as we come from negative infinity, it increases along this line, right? Yes? Then it hits this maximum point and then it begins to decrease, right? So now it's decreasing. And then it hits this point and it turns and then it's increasing again, right? Now the graph we have is very similar to that. It increases in two places and decreases in the middle. Yes? That's what it looks like. Okay. So as I follow this graph, it is increasing from, and I follow it from beginning to end. So it's increasing, this is coming from negative infinity, right? My X value is coming from negative infinity if I come from the left, right? right. So it's increasing from negative infinity until I get to this X value right here, which is uh, 0.71. 0.71. Okay, so that's where, that's where it increases first. Then at 0.71, it begins to do what? Decrease. So I gotta come over here. And from 0.71 until my next X value where it turns, which is 3.29, it increases for this interval. That's what they call this space right here is an interval. Does that make sense? Yes? Yes, ma'am. Okay, then it turns, and then from 3.29 to infinity, I ran out of room, it's increasing again. Is everybody okay with that? It's only the X values. You can't write the Y values there. It's got to be the X. Everybody okay? All good? All right, so let's look at this one right here. Graph this on your calculator for me. So clear your other one out and graph this one. Negative X to the third plus 3X. Okay. This one is relatively nice because your numbers are nice. Because the numbers are where they look like they are. All right, so if you look at this graph right here, this minimum, relative minimum is at where? Zero. zero, zero. That's because x to the third has no leading coefficient. Of, well, it's negative one. So it's at zero, zero. Okay? Then this is where at two and one, two, three, Four. It's at two and four. All right, so its relative minimum is at zero, zero, and its relative maximum is at two and four. Is everybody okay with those two? All right. 
Now then, go to your table, second table, go over here and get some numbers. Let's see, at negative, at negative two, it's off the graph. So at negative one, I'm at positive four. Which table? Second graph. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and then arrow up, like, see, when I get right here at negative two, 20, it's already way up here. Does that make sense? So this is gonna come down pretty skinny, which is what your graph looks like. Then I got that, well, I got negative one and four, I got zero, zero. Then it's at positive one and two, so it comes up and goes, crosses that point right there. Then it's at two and four, and then it turns back down, and then it crosses at three and zero, right? That's the other intercept. And then at positive four, it's already way down here again, right? So if you go back to your picture, it should do something like come down, Turn and go up, turn and come down, something like that. It, it doesn't cross four, so I'm trying to stay to the left of four, and I'm trying to stay to the right of two here. Because it does, I mean, it hits four like way down here, and it hits two way up here. Does that make sense? So your graph shouldn't go way out here, it shouldn't come way out here. It needs to look as close to what you have on your pay, on your calculator as possible. Okay? Don't be drawing me crazy stuff. Okay. As in behavior, as x approaches infinity, what does f of x do? Negative. Why? Yeah, it's going down, right? Okay. As x approaches negative infinity, what does f of x do? It goes positive, which we should have already known because it's an odd function. We should have known that in advance, right? You can answer that without if you want to. All right, how would we write the domain for this? All real numbers. How would we write the range for this? All real numbers. Now, if I have a if I have an absolute minimum or maximum, that's going to change my range, right? Because I'm going to have a y is either greater than or a y is less than. Everybody okay? All right increasing interval and decreasing it starts by doing what what does it do first it decreases twice right decrease increase decrease yes okay so i'm going to start with i always start with what it does so it starts decreasing and i always am going to begin with negative infinity and then it hits what x value here before it turns is it positive no it's coming from negative infinity from the left remember it's left to right it's x X comes from here. It's coming from the left. Negative infinity to what? Zero. To the X value oh. zero. Sorry, I was looking at the Y. Yeah, you got to, it is the Y, it's, it's up and down, which is the Y, but remember we're writing the X value and X is coming from the left. Does that make sense? Okay, so that then, now it's increasing. So I've got to go up here from zero and where does it turn? What X value? The X value. Two. Okay, so then my other increasing is from two to what? Positive infinity. Remember, these are always x values. So always in terms of x here. Everybody okay with that? Does that make sense? So, all right. Top part and let you work on the top. Do one through four. If you do one through four, if you can get number five graphed, then you can graph number five and we'll, we'll talk some more about these other graphs on your assignment. But do one through four for today because that stuff you should be able to answer.